next uh, talk, uh, which is uh, on early warning scores. What is early in EWS? And uh, it will be done by Dr. Varuni Samaranayaka, MBBS, MD, FF, ICM. She is a consultant intensivist working at the National Hospital of Sri Lanka. Over to you, Dr. Samaranayaka. And good morning to you all. And I would also like to thank Ceylon College of Physicians for giving us the opportunity to deliver our talks. So by now, we all have listened to very comprehensive three talks on managing critically ill patients. So I would move on to a different aspect related to uh, critical illness. What about uh, preventing all these sophisticated management? Because always the prevention is better than cure. So my talk is about early warning schools. Before moving on to early warning scores, let's briefly look at what a critical illness is. I would say a critical illness is a life-threatening multi-system process that can result in significant morbidity and mortality. Specifically, without timely and appropriate medical intervention, it ends up in mortality. And usually, uh, it may be a product of one or more underlying pathophysiological process. Let's see the cause of critical illness. Because for us to use this early warning scores, it's necessary to have an understanding about what actually happens during the course of a critical illness. So here, the x-axis denotes the time and the y-axis denotes the severity. And as the time goes on, the severity increases. And you can see this sign denotes a onset of an acute illness. So as time goes on, if the illness is not attended properly or not managed properly, the severity increases with the time. And you can see as the severity increases, there is a rapid progression of the illness and it reaches a stage of organ failure. Initially, the patient will be in the reversible stage of organ failure, but quickly can move on to the irreversible stage of organ failure. If a patient reaches this irreversible point of, uh, irreversible stage of organ failure, even in a developed setup, there is very little that you can do to help patients. So the whole idea of managing critical ill patients is to detect them early and try and manage them before going into irreversible organ failure. So ideally, we have to detect them at least at the reversible stage of the organ failure to help them get better. So can't we detect them early? Yes, of course, because there is always this physiological deterioration preceding the critical illness. So the physiological deterioration will be accompanied by clinical signs and symptoms. But the problem is, initially, during the course of illness, these signs and symptoms will be subtle. Unless you monitor this, you can't catch them. And another problem is, usually at the initial stage, before they go into the reversible stage of organ failure life, patients tend to compensate for their derangement in the physiology. So there will be one or two signs and symptoms that you can actually use for detection of them. So there are various studies which have shown repeatedly saying that if we detect these patients early and then with simple measures, we can prevent them even going into critical care setup. And it has repeatedly shown that a considerable number of ICU admissions are avoidable if we act early. So what's the problem? The problem is these early clinical signs are frequently being missed by uh, clinical professionals because they fail to identify them at an early stage. So what are these things, signs and symptoms that we talk about? 
these are the usual vital signs that we use to monitor our patients during our day-to-day -day practice in the vital organ systems the respiratory the respiratory rate the oxygen saturation the in this cardiovascular system the heart rate the blood pressure in the cns system the level of consciousness urine output so on and apart from these the people have gone into studying various signs of early and late physiological uh, sign uh, various signs of early and late physiological deterioration and they have found out there is a place for pH and base deficit as well. So the ultimate worry of a clinician is if a patient goes into cardiac arrest. So this chain of survival concept is a concept established to get a good outcome of a cardiac arrest. And you can see there are several components. The first one is early recognition and call for help in order to prevent a cardiac arrest. Second would be the early cardioprimary resuscitation to buy time and early defibrillation to restart the heart and good post resuscitation care to restore a quality of life. So each component and their links have to have a good strength in order to get a good outcome. And you can see the first component of this chain of survival is early recognition and call for help to prevent cardiac arrest. There you go. So if we identify them, these patients early, we can prevent a cardiac arrest. So the ideal management would be to spot and identify and predict the patients who are likely to deteriorate, who are at risk of deterioration. So we need to identify this group of patients and we need to proactively observe these patients frequently in order to identify their deterioration at an early stage. So this will help clinicians to timely intervene and to prevent deterioration, preventing adverse effects like periarrest, cardiac arrest, death, and even at an early stage, even prevention of an ICU admission. So there comes these early warning scoring systems. These are in practice now in the world for several decades which was started in Australia and widely being used in Europe countries and even in our countries. And these early warning scoring systems, which are currently in use, are being uh, incorporate the basic vital parameters that I said earlier. The physiological parameters like respiratory rate, saturation, whether the patient is on supplemental oxygen or not, the temperature, the blood pressure, heart rate, level of conscious, consciousness. And you can see, as the physiological parameter deviates from the normality, they are given a higher score. For example, the respiratory rate, if it is normal, within the normal range of 12 to 20, it is given a score of zero. But if the patient becomes tachypneic, it is given a higher score, as well as if the patient is becoming bradypneic. So at one point, we can get a score for a patient calculating the scores which are given to each physiological parameter. So these scoring scores are aligned to a scale of clinical risk of deterioration. So if the particular score is low, zero or low between one to four, we can say the patient is at a lower risk of deterioration. If it is between five to six, patient is at medium risk of deterioration. If the score is seven or more, patient is at a higher risk. So if we keep on monitoring patients and see, we can identify them early. So this is a monitoring chart where we use for uh, this early warning score. And you can see they are color coded as well because the red denotes the danger zones. So in this monitoring chart, you can see at the end, the pain score is also incorporated. So depending on the clinical setting that you are working in, you can modify this early warning scoring system. So for, so, for example, the trauma setup, the pain score is also important. And this could be modified even into obstetric setup, the maternal early warning scoring system, so the pediatric setup, the pediatric early warning setup, and so on. 
So if you monitor these patients using early warning scoring systems, you can see that we can appreciate the trend of the vital signs. And the whole idea is to identify them at an early stage before they reach the red zone. So this is a tracking system for patients to identify them early. Using this tra tracking system, we can incorporate this into a triggering system of response depending on the uh, patients, the risk level of deterioration. So this triggering of action could be the increase, can range from increasing of the frequency of monitoring into an escalation of care. And in this escalation of care, we can get involved the critical care team early to, a, to the ward, ward setup because the ideally these scoring system should be used at ward setups to identify these patients who are deteriorating quickly. So this is an example of using these early warning scoring systems as a uh, tracking system ending up in uh, using a triggering system to get the uh, specialized health out of the uh, out of out from the ward usually this help would be from the critical care setup so this help could be provided in several ways with uh, we called in different names medical emergency team the outreach team and so on and you can have a greater escalation strategy depending on your setup so it looks simple and straightforward but they are with warnings as well as these early warning scoring systems uh, were established in use, people have started studying to see their efficacy. And there are two main things that people have found out. One thing is the lack of sensitivity and specificity of these current systems to allow accurate detection of early critical illness. The merit study by Hillman and colleagues, they have found that majority of deteriorating patients were not detected until 15 minutes of uh before they suffered a cardiac arrest so i mean if we can detect them quite early it would have been beneficial the soccer study by jackson colleagues they have found out actually that this current mid call criteria or the medical emergency team call criteria actually late signs of deterioration so the this is the group that went and studied the vital signs uh, other than the basic vital parameters that I mentioned and went on studying the pH and the base deficit. So another common problem using these early warning scoring systems are inaccuracies in the calculation of scores. So there are documentation errors and significant intra and inter-rater reliability errors. So usually these scores are maintained by nurses and junior doctors. So there's a Sri Lankan study also which has looked into this, uh, into evaluating this feasibility of performing early warning scoring systems. And they have also said that the limited availability of observation reporting is a problem. So early warning scoring systems. In a setup like ours, these early warning scoring systems are really useful. But at the same time, these early warning scoring systems, there is a need to. Uh, reassess the current use of them and to use a more structured and scientific approach to their use and to derive more validated scoring systems to de novo use. So I end up my presentation here. It's a very brief one. Uh, and these are my references. Thank you.